Okay, thanks, Mel. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, SAPOL uh, is launching its latest uh, media road safety campaign today, uh, which is focusing on uh, regional uh, areas and regional South Australians. And whilst we've uh, delivered some new road safety campaigns of recent times, I consider this to be one of the most important um, uh, media campaigns or road safety campaigns that we've launched uh, in recent times. The reason being is that approximately 70% of the deaths on South Australian roads each year are on country roads, on regional roads. And of those deaths on South Australian roads, two in three people who die are from the country areas. Now this is over the last five years between 2016 and 2020, that equates to 313 people who have lost their lives uh, in South Australia. 207 of those people have lost their lives uh, in reach, uh, from people from regional areas. So like so that's two in three lives lost on regional roads are uh, people who live in the regions. So part of what this uh, campaign is designed to do is to dispel some of the myths that we understand uh, are out there, particularly with people living in the country in regional areas, around who's actually dying on country roads. Because some of the myths that are out there include the fact that country people think that it's people from the city or metropolitan areas who don't know how to drive on country roads who are the ones who are actually dying on country roads. Now, whilst this is true to a degree, uh, metro people or anyone who really is not immune to any of the fatal five, the statistics clearly show that it is country people who are dying on country roads. In fact, more alarmingly, over the last five year period, 132 people have died on country roads within 20 kilometres of where they live. I'll say it again. There are 132 people who nearly made it home, but didn't because they died on the roads in South Australia within 20 kilometres of their home. That statistic in itself is alarming. More alarming this year is that nearly half of those people who have died on country roads, the regional people who have died on country roads, nearly half of those have lived less than 20 kilometres away from where, they, from where they died on our roads. So there's been some rigorous research, as we always do, um, through uh, our um, surveys, our focus groups, to make sure that these campaigns really do hit the mark in terms of who we're trying to reach out to and the behaviours we're trying to change. And country people, uh, people living in the regions, have actually given us quite a bit of feedback in the development of this campaign. Some of the myths that are out there is that, like I said before, it's city drivers that are, di are dying on country roads, not country people. Um, it's a belief that driving without your seatbelt when you're travelling between properties is a safe thing to do because they do it day in, day out. Similarly, um, you get to know the roads when you live in the country and so people can become complacent and there is a level of complacency here where I'm not going to worry about too much because I know the road but the roads and the conditions who's on the road can change as can um, the conditions of the individual uh, who's driving on those roads as well. It may well be that you've pulled out from a junction of a side road into a main road a thousand times before and there's never been any traffic coming along. If you're complacent and you pull out that same intersection, you only have to go wrong once because of the speed and speed limits on country roads for it to end in tragic consequences. So this campaign is very much about targeting the fatal five um, in regional areas, really asking people living in the country areas to understand what's involved, understand the consequences of what's involved and understand that this message is for them. We do not want people living in the country dying on country roads. In fact, we don't want anybody dying on our roads anywhere in this state. But clearly, with the high representation of a number of lives lost, nearly three quarters of lives lost on South Australian roads every year being in regional areas, this campaign has the potential for significant impact uh, on, our, on our community. Uh, along with uh, this campaign, obviously SAPOL will have a very strong enforcement uh, campaign to go along with this as well throughout the next um, few months, which will reinforce the message, reinforce the behaviour change we're looking for uh, in our country people and our country drivers. And I'll perhaps now hand over to uh, Minister Tarsia. 
Thank you, Assistant Commissioner. Uh, this is a really powerful campaign. This is a targeted campaign that is definitely going to save lives. As you've heard, uh, two out of three uh, lives that are lost on country roads are country people. It's really, really important uh, that our people uh, that are in the country uh, take note, digest this campaign and do the right thing on our roads. We know that when you look across the state, around 30% around of our population uh, lives in country areas. Uh, however, uh, in recent times, about 70% of lives lost uh, have occurred in those country areas. Uh, so we know that country people are overrepresented when it comes to lives lost on our, on our roads. It's really important that this campaign uh, uh, sinks in, that people digest it, that people learn from it. Uh, it is a very targeted and a hard-hitting campaign. Um, just because people might know the roads like the back of their hand, it doesn't mean that they're immune uh, from the risks on our road. You just cannot take your eyes off the road. And what this campaign will do uh, is it will target the fatal five, things like drink driving, things like dangerous driving, things like driving without a seatbelt, things like distraction. Uh, this campaign will definitely save lives in the, in the long run. Uh, as we've heard, this campaign has been uh, utilised by looking at focus groups, by looking at people who travel in our country areas each and every day. And we know that unfortunately, from time to time, that complacency can sink in with some. But unfortunately, if people are complacent on our roads, then this can have fatal consequences. We know that we've lost 76 lives on our roads this year compared to 68 at the same time last year. Uh, this is going to be uh, targeted uh, not only uh, this coming from this coming Sunday, uh, but also in April last year. Uh, uh, sorry, and also, I'll say that again, this is going to be targeted not only from uh, this weekend, but also in April next year. Uh, we know that uh, these are the times that people uh, will start to uh, get out into our regional areas, uh, drive out into the country. But if you are driving on those regional roads, if you are taking those country roads home, uh, it's, uh, it's a reminder that we've all got to do the right thing on our roads. So this campaign is going to target those fatal five aspects. Uh, I've got no doubt that it's going to go a long way uh, towards changing driver behaviour. But as we know, two thirds of lives lost on country roads are country people. It doesn't have to be this way. Uh, we're asking all of our friends uh, in the country uh, to please learn from this messaging, do the right thing on our roads. Uh, we've had a big 18 months. Let's make sure that we uh, enjoy our regional areas, especially as we come into these warmer months. Uh, but at the same time, uh, we all do the right thing on our roads and make sure that we uh, get home safe. Happy to take any questions for Assistant Commissioner or myself. Uh is there anything else being done alongside the campaign to you know, help bring these statistics down. Yeah, absolutely. So the state government since 2018 has spent over and will be continuing to spend over $2 billion uh, on regional road development. And of course, we also continue to bring in stronger legislation through the parliament. Things like attacking uh, extreme speed, attacking things like uh, causing death while dangerous driving. And of course, there's also legislation behind a bit before the parliament at the moment uh, that will target a uh, 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 drug driving as well. So there's a, a whole range of measures that we're using to, to make sure that we continue uh, to, to save lives. That's what we want to do. We want to save lives on our roads. It doesn't have to always end up uh, in carnage on our roads. So we are utilising a whole range of measures to try and uh, save lives on our roads. Do we know these kind of campaigns, these kind of commercials, the best way of going about you know, teaching those lessons? Yeah, so the focus groups are really important. You can see the level of professionalism that was uh, was taken in producing this content. Uh, when you look at the cost of production also rolling out, it's over $800,000. So uh, the state government working with SAPOL, working with the Department of Transport, really take these campaigns seriously. We utilise focus groups. Uh, we make sure that we talk to real people who use these roads in the country each and every day. Would you say this is the most confronting campaign you've worked on? Yeah, I'd say this is certainly one of the most confronting campaigns that I've seen, but of course, uh, at the end of the day, we need to all do what we can uh, to save lives on our roads. That's what we're here to do. So uh, some people might find this uh, campaign shocking, confronting, uh, but at the end of the day, if it saves a life, then it's worth every cent. Okay. I ask some questions. Yeah, Hi, Thanks, Minister. Uh, 
an incident at a Medi hotel with the um, Uber driver, I believe, um, an incident involving illicit substances being delivered. Um, can you explain to us what's happened there? Oh, look, I'm aware that the media release has just recently gone out, but I actually don't have any information on that particular issue at this stage, so I'd perhaps refer you back to police media if I can. No. Thank um, you. If, it's, if you've got a bit of, I suppose, um, understand just what's, what's happened there, the delivery of an illicit substance to a mini hotel, um, how, how can that happen? Yeah, literally, like I said, I'm aware that the media release has gone out. I haven't actually seen the detail. I've seen the release itself, so I really am going to have to refer you back to this. Um, what I would like to do is, uh, is to focus particularly on this campaign today and perhaps coming back to your question around uh, how confronting uh, do we think that this uh, media campaign is. Uh, it is confronting. Um, having lived in the regions myself uh, for a number of years previously, uh, what I found particularly uh, confronting about these particular adverts is that um, it actually is re very representative of who the community are. Uh, you see a young footballer you know, in his football outfit you see a tradie uh, who's uh, working and perhaps travelling long distances and long hours. You see a mum uh, and their child. You, know, you see a range of people, and you, and you see a you see a farmer or, or you know a land worker, um, all who are very representative of uh, people who live in our regions. And this is why I think it's going to be um, quite confronting for people who do live in our regions, because every time there's a loss, a life lost uh, in a country area, in a country town there are often people who know of that person or who know that person. And the ripple effect through the community is amplified because of that connection that people have. So we're really hoping that this is not just about individuals um, understanding and resonating with this messaging and, and actually taking a step back and thinking about their own driving behaviour. We're actually really hoping that this campaign, like others, starts conversations within communities, within football clubs, within workplaces, so that the message gets through that it is country people dying on country roads in South Australia and we want that to stop. Similarly, um, you know, we're quite up front here. Police can't be everywhere all the time. It's everybody's responsibility um, to think road safety every time they hop in the car. It's everybody's responsibility to do the right thing. And we think that this campaign uh, will really um, be something that particularly people who live in country areas go, yeah, I get it, I understand that, because that is the community representative of the community I live in. Um, and it's clear that you've targeted the fate of five. Um, is there one like that you're giving more of a specific focus than the other, or is it all kind of branched together? Yeah, um, look, unfortunately, the fate of five are the fate of five for a reason. That's because all five of them uh, contribute to the lives lost predominantly on their roads and serious injuries. Um, so it's not just about drink and drug driving, um, but it is about speeding. Uh, and it's not necessarily about um, excessive speeding or extreme speeding in country areas. You only have to realise that most country roads are 110 kilometres an hour. So as soon as something goes wrong, as soon as you're distracted, if only for a moment, if your driving ability is impaired, only by a little bit, that every single little mistake you make or that deliberate choice you make to increase your own risk is amplified because you're already doing probably around 110 kilometres an hour. And it's very unforgiving when you leave the road at that speed or, in fact, when you drive into another vehicle. Um, it's very unforgiving and the, and the outcomes of that are obviously um, going to be a lot higher in terms of the chances of a serious injury crash or losing your life or killing someone else who's essentially doing the right thing on the roads. You mentioned the ripple on effect in country communities from deaths like this. Is it surprising and I suppose disappointing for you that given so many people who have experienced this in the country, have lost a loved one or someone they you know, went to school with, that it then still happens when it's hit so close to home? Uh, yes, in some ways it is, it is very disappointing um, because, uh, it, because of the effect on the community, because of the effect not only within, say, social clubs and sporting clubs, schools, but also in the emergency services as well, and particularly in regional areas. We have a lot of volunteers uh, who are out there um, day in, day out, helping um, the paid emergency services workers at road crash scenes and potentially going to crashes where you know, a community member or even a, you know, someone they know has been killed in, in, those, in those crashes. I think that part of the issue is, and all of these campaigns are designed to target this, is this apathy around it's not going to happen to me. Because we all spend a lot of time in our cars or in our motorbikes or in other vehicles, and most days, thankfully, most of us are safe. What we're saying to people is, particularly country people, you know, don't be apathetic in terms of your driving behaviour, your concentration on the roads, 
because it is you who are dying on our roads, in addition to metropolitan people obviously driving on our roads. Um, don't be apathetic about it. Now, this is something that um, does happen, and when it does happen, the consequences are catastrophic. So it's that reminder to people. It's not necessarily the person who deliberately goes out and drinks or takes drugs and then drives. It's the person who makes a simple mistake of checking on their child or maybe checking a phone a message, a split-second decision or reaching for a water bottle or changing the radio station. Sometimes people make mistakes, but those split-second mistakes on country roads can be much more catastrophic much quicker. Um, sorry, just one thing. Um, do you mind just explaining the process of the like, creation of the ads and like, where that was shot, how you kind of did those mock-up crashes? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm happy to talk to that and then the Assistant Commissioner Parrot might also uh, want to chime in. So uh, the South Australia Police Media Road Safety Unit uh, do obviously a tremendous job in, in coming up with these campaigns. I also talk to the Department of Transport Infrastructure as, as well. Uh, the, as you can see, the Fatal Five are uh, uh, obviously the significant factors in terms of lives lost on our, on our roads. And what you see from this campaign uh, is the campaign will target those Fatal Five uh, situations, uh, those circumstances, things like uh, drink driving, drug driving, dangerous driving, not wearing a seat belt and also speeding as well. So uh, from that, uh, those campaigns are, are constructed. Obviously, there's a, a lot um, of focus groups that are engaged as well. Uh, and as I said, talking to real people in the regions that drive on these country roads as well. Uh, and as you can see, quite a significant production that goes on. It does get uh, uh, pressure tested, if you, if you like. We do review it, uh, and we're very happy with the product. So we know it'll go a long way towards saving lives on our roads. Just with that reviewing process, would that happen down after several months or what? Absolutely. I, I think uh, South Australia Police uh, Media Road Safety Unit do a fantastic job uh, in these campaigns. In recent times, we've seen they've actually won awards uh, for those campaigns. Our last campaign, which was a testimonials campaign, uh, where we actually spoke to uh, real families of victims that have suffered, uh, members who have passed away, or also uh, had uh, friends that have passed away. That was an, an outstanding campaign that uh, has actually won awards. Uh, and you can see the level of professionalism that goes on here. Uh, we only do this because we know it will target uh, that attitudinal aspect. It will target the, the why. Why are people uh, still doing things like speeding? Why are they still choosing to drink drive? Why are they still choosing uh, to not wear a seatbelt when they know uh, that it can have fatal consequences? So uh, these campaigns are professional, they're hard hitting, uh, and I know they'll, they'll go a long way uh, towards saving lives on our roads. Um, in a state like Canada, I would get a message to people who might be going about <coughs> any illicit behaviour around our many hotels. Uh, yeah, so look, um, let's remember that uh, people of South Australia, we've been extremely fortunate here in South Australia. Our emergency services workers, our police, our doctors, our nursing nurses, they are doing an outstanding job. Because our police, our nurses, our doctors are doing a great job in looking after us here in South Australia. The last thing that they need uh, for people uh, to carry on, to do the wrong thing, to break the law. So please do the right thing. Remember, you're in South Australia. We're extremely fortunate. The light is at the end of the tunnel. Uh, let's do the right thing. A couple of border breach arrests as well um, from this morning. Uh, any concern with the, I know one was um, approved and just fine, but the two that were arrested, is there any concern about any stops they might have made? So I've heard some allegations of uh, border breaches. It's another reminder, whilst those details are still being worked through, it's a reminder to us that, you know, these emergency declarations, these border rules, they exist to keep us all safe. Let's make sure we do the right thing. Uh, and if the authorities ask you to stop at the border, uh, please do that. Follow their directions. They're only there to keep us all safe. Okay, thanks. Thank thanks. Thank you. Mr. Gibbetson, can I some stills? Yeah. yeah where would you like them? The TV or? Okay. Where would you like them? I'll the call for the guys on the TV. I'll leave the lights on, please. Okay. Well, the TV was okay. Yeah, yeah. four years. I'm going to get a wide first down. That's all right. Stand on. Eight, 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 eight